JG, one of the important points in the now beginning three-year ordeal of your profession, this pandemic, what is the significance of the Pfizer announcement? Yeah, this is based on one study. Uh, there are going to be many more over the coming weeks that shows that even though there is a significant degradation of vaccine, um, potential vaccine efficacy uh, from uh, in response to Omicron, that there is for some protection. It's not a complete escape. And so it's going to likely be boosted um, by having a booster, by having a third dose. The prime minister will be grilled this morning in one part of that in the United Kingdom. And I would editorialize it. It seems to be a lot more chaotic over here than even the gentle chaos of America is on vaccine passports and the vaccine restrictions uh, of the unvaccinated, I should say, in Germany. Does that work? Do vaccine passports work? I think um, they anything that can boost vaccine uptake, uh, get people vaccinated. We still don't know whether two doses is going to be enough uh, to prevent severe disease, um, get pe keep people out of the hospital. Maybe it will be enough to prevent even less severe disease. We just don't know yet. We're, we're going to have to see for uh, what real world data is like. But yes, I mean uh, anything that can get people to uh, to get vaccinated, I'm I'm for as long as they have a choice to not get vaccinated vaccinated, even if it's very inconvenient. Gigi, this uh, Pfizer and BioNTech news really highlights the sort of controversy around boosters and the possible need to continue distributing them. A lot of disagreement, even among medical professionals, about the importance for healthy individuals to get boosters. Do you think that data like this actually edifies the case for requiring this as yet another uh, course in the normal course of action with vaccines? Yeah, I mean, we'll have to see what there's going to be more data that's coming, but it does indicate that um, getting that third dose might be much more important than just a nice to have. It might be quite necessary for certain groups in particular, um, people who are more vulnerable to COVID um, even uh, before, you know, older people, people who are immunocompromised. Um, so it might be uh, it might be something that is is becomes part of the vaccine. It's just a three dose vaccine. Dr. Grunville, do you expect a time when we're always just getting shot up with different vaccines to try to adjust to the different variants, the idea that we're going to be getting uh, vaccinated as frequently as we have been over the past couple of years? I mean, we'll have to see. I mean, in general, there is no disease that's good to get. Um, so uh, I think it would be nice to have more vaccines for other things that we suffer from. But um, but we'll have to see. I hope that we can uh, vaccinate more people in the world and we can stop this uh, right. this, this variant uh, sequence. And John, with Amish Adalto yesterday, as he reviewed, it was a wonderful professional review of the efficacy of the booster. You wonder if that changes with this announcement. Yeah, it's worth pointing out, though, Tom, what we're talking about almost exclusively is vaccine escape. And Gigi, that was only one question of three questions that we wanted answered. How contagious was this variant? How severe was this variant? Aside from whether it escapes the vaccines or not, what have we learned about that, Gigi? Um, there are some indications that are positive that it might be less severe, but I think we really need to hold off and see. Um, we have a different population that has a different vaccination uh, coverage in this in this country. We have a different um, spread of Delta in this country. Uh, I, I think it's best to wait for some more data before saying, "Oh, it's a mild uh, a mild variant," uh, because I think some people are saying that, and we just don't have enough information to say that yet.